What's good, y'all, man? We skipped the intro around here. So a couple of days ago, the Atlanta Hawks offered Bogdan Bogdanovich around $72 million for four years. And just yesterday, or last night, I should say, um, the Kings declined it. So the Atlanta Hawks pretty much got Bogdan for nothing. Now, first off, I'm going to talk about the Kings aspect of this trade and how bad of a franchise I think the Kings are. Like, no offense, Kings fans. Like, honestly, if you're a true fan of any NBA team, and I see this a lot on social media where people will just hype their own team up like, like crazy. Like, I like being a realistic fan. I like saying, oh, I'm a Hawks fan. We're not going to get more than, at most, we get the seventh seed. But I don't even think we're going to get that. I think we're going to get an easy eighth seed, nothing higher. I, I like being realistic. I, I like keeping myself in. So if you're a Kings fan, just just try and be open-minded for me real quick. Um, so they let go of Bogey, and I thought that was fine. I thought, oh, okay, so now they're going to start Buddy Heald. I mean, try and get that chemistry up, because as we all know, or if you didn't know, um, Buddy Heald was having some real issues with Luke Walton and the Kings organization because he, he was coming off the bench for Bogdan. So then Bogdan, they let go of Bogdan. So I think, oh, okay, they'll just start buddy healed try to make a relationship again make sure he actually stays in sacramento and turns out news comes out that tyrese halliburton is apparently who they're trying to start at shooting guard over buddy healed now let me just say and clarify that i love tyrese halliburton i thought that the hawks honestly should have picked him that was my number one on the draft board for the hawks for me and number two is onyeka so i love i love him i'm not saying he's a bad player or anything but putting him alongside De'Aaron Fox ultimately doesn't really do anything in the fact that De'Aaron Fox and Tyrese Halliburton, they're both very similar players. Or at least their, their, their play style is a little bit similar. I would say if you don't know much about Tyrese, I'd compare him to like a Shy Gilgis Alexander in the NBA. And I just, I don't see them. I, I think every single backcourt should have at least one really good three-point shooter. And even though Tyrese, he did shoot 40% in college, they were mostly like catch and shoot threes. He's not like really creating for himself like a D'Angelo Russell or a Trey Young or a Lillard or Curry or anything like that. He's kind of just a catch and shoot three-point shooter. Also, obviously, that means Buddy Heald is once again coming off the bench, which means I guarantee he's going to he's gonna request a trade this, this coming season. So to start the year, last year, you had De'Aaron Fox, you had Bogdan, you had Buddy Heald, you had Marvin Bagley, you had Harry Giles. Honestly, the young core was looking really good last year. Then, of course, you know, early in the season last year, Marvin Bagley got injured. I still believe in Marvin Bagley, but those injuries are kind of killer. Um, Harry Giles, I mean, he didn't develop very well. I don't know how many minutes he played. But they also let go of Harry Giles in this offseason, which I don't really understand because you're, you're not really competing. So getting rid of all these young players for nothing, it doesn't really do anything for your team. Also, the fact that Luke Walton is still the coach of the Kings when he obviously doesn't fit the play style of of Buddy Heald, of De'Aaron Fox, or anything. I really think what, like the Kings have to be top five worst, organiz worst organizations. Like, I can't name five organizations worse than this. I will give credit where it's due, though. They, they haven't totally screwed up. Like, Tyrese Halliburton is still a really good player. They re-signed De'Aaron Fox for five years for $163 million. I mean... Uh, like that might be an overpay i'm not gonna lie that might be an overpay just because i think darren fox has one of the lowest motors in the nba personally like if you look at trey young jamal murray ben simmons i just darren fox doesn't really care about winning like they do like i was watching the uh the jj reddick podcast with darren fox on it and he, he i mean he looks like he enjoys sacramento so just from a living aspect and probably his role on the team he probably loves sacramento sacramento and won't leave but is he really a point guard that's going to lead you to winning especially when i don't know i, I just don't really see it i'm not going to say it's an overpay and you know you had to max him out because another team would so that's good but I, I would just be a little worried if i was kings fans now from an atlanta hawks aspect i really love this signing I mean, Kevin Herter and Bogdan are both very similar players in the way they play. So honestly, if people say, like I've seen people say on Twitter, they're like, oh, it's hurting Kevin Herter's development, something like that. Like, they're they're not even too far off of each other. I think Kevin Herter could actually start over Bogdan if he really, if he really tried this season. I'm not sure if many people know this, but the Atlanta Hawks were the worst team in three-point field goal percentage. So it, it doesn't hurt to add more shooting because we're supposed to be an offensive-oriented team. You know all offense but we we're only an average offense last year 
we need we, like as much as we need defense, we also need to be a top five offense in the league with Trey Young on our team, or we're not gonna make the playoffs. Now the downsides of the Hawks, I'm not just gonna praise the Hawks all the time. The downsides of the Hawks getting bogged on, I mean it's a little bit of an overpay, but I mean that's what you had to do to get him, so it's a free asset. But also, I feel like the Hawks, this is why I wanted to get Tyrese Halliburton, because Tyrese Halliburton and Trey Young's play styles would fit so well together. Trey Young could play off the ball. You know, Tyrese is good on defense. He has a good wingspan, good size. You know, he could shoot the catch and shoots for Trey, hitting him open. I feel like those fits were really good. And Bogdan's fit, yes, he's a good shooter, but can he really play make even for a shooting guard? Can he, like, can he take the pressure off of Trey Young's back? Like, yes, we did need to get better from a three-point percentage, like I just said. But at the same time, defense is still an issue. And it, it really, because, like, before before the Bogdan signing, we had Trey Young, Kevin Herter, Ray John Rondo, and Chris Dunn. Those were our four guards. And now we have five guards, so I'm really confused how many minutes Chris Dunn is playing. Because I'm assuming Rondo is going to be that, that sixth-man backup point guard. Or seventh man, because Daniel Gallinari will be coming off the bench. It was confirmed by the general manager or the team owner. I forgot which one. But I don't really see... I, would Chris Dunn be like 10 minutes a game when like a guard's on fire? Like, Are we really going to sign Chris Dunn when he could actually be playing vi valuable minutes on any other team? Like, And another thing is, you know, Kevin Herter and Bogdan are very similar players. I don't know why we would get two of the same player. I mean, it... it it makes sense in some ways, and the other day, in other ways, it doesn't make sense. But that's kind of like every single NBA move. Like nothing's gonna make absolute perfect sense unless you get a guy like Kawhi Leonard who could just do everything. But that's gonna be the end of the video. So if you guys really enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe. It would really help me out, and I'd appreciate it. Um, and I mean, that's all I have to say. Peace.